Okay, so in section 6.5, we are going to learn how to solve absolute value equations. Um, and before we start talking about solving absolute value equations, I wanted to remind you about what an absolute value is. So what is an absolute value of a number? So take a couple, uh, couple seconds and think about what you remember about absolute value. You probably remember that it's always positive, but what's more important is that it's actually going to be distance away from zero. So, if I ask you what is an absolute value of positive 2, you would tell me that it's 2. If I ask you what is an absolute value of negative 4, you would tell me that it's 4. And if I ask you what is, what is an absolute value of negative 5, it would be 5. An absolute value of 3 is 3. So of course you can think of this as an absolute value making the numbers positive, but what is more important is that it's going to tell you how far is that number away from zero. And that is an actual definition. So definition um, of an absolute value is that it's a distance of that number away from zero. And in order to distinguish that we, interest, we um, want to talk about the absolute value, we use these vertical bars. So if I ask you what is an absolute value of negative 5, what I'm actually asking you is how far is negative 5 away from 0? So what is this distance? And the reason why we always give a positive answer is because when we talk about distance, we never say, um, you would never say that, oh, I went for a run and I ran negative 2 miles. You always use a positive number to describe the distance. So since we're interested in the distance away from 0, we use a positive number to give that answer. And that is why the absolute value is always going to be positive. It's because it always tells you the distance, and the distance is always going to be positive. Okay. So now that we remember what an absolute value of a number is, we want to uh, talk about what is an absolute value equation. So an absolute value equation is an equation that contains an absolute value expression. Um, so a couple um, things to remember. Equation has an equal sign. That's why it's called an equation. And an absolute value equation is going to have an equal sign as well as an absolute value expression. So here are some examples. Here's our equal sign. And here are our absolute value bars. So here is an absolute value equation. Here's another example, and here's another example. So I know you want to know not just what it is, but how do we actually solve it. And this is a key thing here. We're going to use it for the next two sections. So in order to solve an absolute value equation, we are going to rewrite absolute value equation as two equations, and then we're going to solve each one of those. So the first step is going to be rewriting the absolute value equation as two separate equations. Here's our first example, and we're going to be learning um, how to solve an absolute value equation that has no steps inside the absolute value bars, and then we're going to make it more complicated. So in example one, we would like to solve an equation where absolute value of x is equal to 7. So what I want you to think about is what does this mean in terms of absolute, absolute value? and the distance away from zero. So I want to know what number is seven units away from zero. So it could be seven units away from zero to the right, but it could also be seven units away from zero to the left. So we actually have two equations. So the first equation is that at x is going to be equal to positive 7, meaning that u went 7 units to the right, or it could also be equal to negative 7 because i went 7 units to the left from 0. Now, since we didn't have any steps inside the absolute value bars, it was just plain x, you're done. This is your um, solution, x is equal to 7 or x is equal to negative 7, and there's nothing else for you to solve. So here's two examples for you to try on your own to see if you got this concept. Okay, so now that you could solve an absolute value equation with no steps inside the absolute value bars, we're going to solve um, an equation with one step inside. So what I want to know is what, um, for what value of x would this expression be 8 units away from 0? So 8 units away from 0 
again, could either be 8 units to the right or 8 units to the left. So I could go 8 units to the right and end up at a positive 8, or I can go 8 units to the left and end up at negative 8. Now here's what's important, is that my actual expression is not going to change. Um, please don't ever make negative 3 positive because you remember that absolute values of is positive. This expression is going to stay exactly the way it is. So it could, um, the expression x minus 3 could either be at positive 8 or it could be equal to negative 8. And again, I'm going to emphasize again that the expression itself, so the expression that is inside the absolute value, doesn't actually change. It stays exactly the same and we don't do anything to it whatsoever. So now you actually have an equation that needs to be solved. So we wouldn't stop here because we are solving for x. So what I need to do is I need to isolate the x by adding 3 to both sides. So x is equal to 11 or um, I would have to solve this equation as well. So we're going to add 3 to both sides and end up with x is equal to negative 5. So these are um, two solutions that are going to make this equation true. So x is equal to 11 or x is equal to negative 5. All right, so here's an example for yourself to try on your own. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at more complicated equation that requires many more steps. Um, the major difference here is that absolute value here is actually not by itself, and it has a 3 multiplied by it and negative 5. So you, what you need to remember here, which is very, very important, is you always need to isolate the absolute value. So if it's already isolated, like we saw in our previous example, absolute value of x minus 3 was already by itself. There was nothing multiplied by it or added to it. Uh, we didn't have to do much, but now we have this 3 that's multiplied by the absolute value expression and we have this negative 5 that's subtracted from it. So we do have to address both of those. Okay, so I'm going to use my highlighter and I'm going to highlight my absolute value expression and that is what I want to isolate. So I'm going to rewrite it here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first think about how to solve this. The first thing I would do is we are going to add 5 to both sides and we get 3 times 2x minus 7 is equal to 9. So now this 3 is multiplied by the absolute value so we're going to divide both sides by 3. And my new equation is going to be 2x minus 7 is equal to 3. Now if this is confusing you a little bit, I wanted to do something very simple on the side and see if you could see the connection. Let's say I ask you to solve for x and this was your uh, this was your equation. 3x minus 5 is equal to 4. Just think about the steps you would take to isolate the x. You would add 5 to both sides and you would get 3x is equal to 9 and then you would divide both sides by 3 so you already know how to isolate the variable, and it's exactly the same as isolating the absolute value expression. You're going to do the same steps um, as you would in here. So don't get confused, you already know how to do this. Okay, now this takes us here. This is our equation. Our absolute value is isolated. However, remember that we can't solve it until we, uh, we rewrite as two different um, equations. Okay, so let's think about what this is telling us. This telling us is that this expression is 3 units away from 0. And we could be 3 units to the right, or we could be 3 units to the left. So my two equations are going to be 2x minus 7 is equal to positive 3, or 2x minus 7 is equal to negative 3. Now remember our expression inside the absolute value doesn't change. This 2x minus 7 stayed as 2x minus 7 here and here. The only thing that we did is we set it equal to a positive 3 or a negative 3. Now we need to solve it. So 
We need to isolate the x, so we're going to add 7 to both sides and we get 2x is equal to 10. And then we are going to divide by 2. And this gives us a solution of x is equal to 5. Or, here's the second equation. Again, we need to isolate the x, so we're going to add 7 to both sides. And we get 2x is equal to 4. Divide both sides by 2. And we get x is equal to 2. So this is our answer. x is equal to 5 or x is equal to 2. So I'm going to write it here. So here's our answer. x is equal to 5 or x is equal to 2. So here's the problems for you um, to try on your own. Remember that your first step is going to be to isolate the absolute value. And isolate means get it alone. So if there is a 2 multiplied by it, you don't want this. You do not want to have a plus 4.1. You need to have the absolute value all by itself. Okay. So it is possible for you to have no solution for your problem. So it is very important for you to realize when that happens. So the first thing I would do here is I would isolate the absolute value because as you notice, we have this plus six that is added to the absolute value, so it's not isolated. So what I'm gonna do first is subtract six and I get three x plus six equal to negative eight. Now what does this mean? This is telling you that the distance away from zero of this expression is gonna be equal to negative eight, but we have we can't have negative distance. Have negative distance, right? You never say I went for a run um, and I ran negative four miles because it doesn't make any sense. So this one has no solution because the setup doesn't make any sense and we cannot have a negative distance. So there is no x value that's going to make it true and you're not going to solve anything at all, you are going to write no solution, and that's it. And this is going to happen when the absolute value, is, uh, once it's isolated, is equal to negative number, because we're saying the distance is negative, and that doesn't make any sense. So try to do these two problems. Remember to think about whether, whether there is a solution, and if there is no solution, remember to write that there is none. Okay. So there's a couple more things that come up with absolute value. Um, you'll see a term that um, comes up in this section and it is absolute deviation. So absolute deviation of a number x from a given value is the absolute value of the difference of x and the given value. So think about absolute devi deviation as um, how far x can deviate from the given value. Okay, and this could be another word, it could be absolute error. So here's an avoid problem for us. So before the start of professional basketball game, a basketball must be inflated to an air pressure of eight pounds per square inch with an absolute error of 0 0.5 PSI. So this absolute error is how far um, you can be away from the eight pounds. Find the minimum and maximum acceptable air pressure. Okay. So remember again that the deviation is equal to x minus the given value. So our absolute deviation is equal to x minus the given value. So the given value is going to be 8 pounds. So I'm going to write here. So absolute deviation is equal to x minus the given value. So you can see the connection. Okay, so basically what this tells us is that um, it's possible for you to get um, a wrong air pressure by, and it's going to be wrong by 0.5. So what's acceptable? Well, if the absolute value is 0 0.5, that means that you're 0 0.5 away from 0. So the expression itself can either be equal to 0 0.5 or it could be equal to negative 0 0.5. And we get 
x is equal to 8.5 or x is equal to 7.5. Now this makes sense because what this is telling us is that here is eight pounds, right? So eight pounds per square inch, this is what the basketball should be inflated. However, we know that there is an error of 0.5. So 8.5 is gonna be the maximum pressure that we're gonna allow, and 7.5 is gonna be the minimum pressure that we allow, because we could be 0.5 away from the true value. So we're allowed to be at a minimum of 7.5 PSI, and the maximum is going to be 8.5 PSI. And that's it. So here's um, another problem for you. And um, remember to look back at the definition of absolute deviation to help you set it up.